Inspector Goat Goes by Train is a crime novel by H.R.F. Keating. It is the seventh novel in the Inspector Goat series. Henry Raymond Fitzwalter Keating, the 31st of October 1926 to the 27th of March 2011, was an English crime fiction writer most notable for his series of novels featuring Inspector Goat of the Bombay Cid. Inspector Goate's latest assignment is simple and offers the chance for well-deserved rest. He is to escort an infamous confidence trickster from Calcutta to Mumbai by railway. Goat is looking forward to relaxing in air-conditioned comfort on the Calcutta Mail train as it passes through the beautiful Indian scenery, but his traveling companions make the journey far from restful. In the first half of the novel the main theme is one of suspense and doubt as Goat alternately becomes increasingly certain and uncertain about the real identity of A.K. Banerjee. In the second half the novel focuses on the difference between laws and morality as Goat and Bhattacharya argue about the morality of the latter's crimes as opposed to their legality. The novel opens with an article in the Times of India, which names Goat as the officer to escort fraudster A.K. Bhattacharya from Calcutta to Mumbai. Bhattacharya made a fortune selling wax fakes of ancient Indian statues as the real thing. An American professor exposed him with a cigar lighter but Bhattacharya escaped. He has never been photographed and only his description is known. Once train goat finds himself in a compartment with a well-dressed, charming Bengali. Goat is reluctant to talk about his mission and his traveling companion begins trying to guess Goate's profession and reason for travel, his guesses are ridiculous, possibly even insulting. Eventually he guesses that Goat is the inspector escorting Bhattacharya to trial. Goat notes the initials on his companion's luggage are AKB and suspects the man may, in fact, be AK Bhattacharya. The stranger reveals that he had read the newspaper article about Goat and introduces himself as AK Banerjee. The next day Goat and Banerjee are joined in their compartment by a pair of young backpackers traveling with an Indian guru. The boy, Red, is British and the girl, Mary Jane, is an American. They are hippies. Goat argues their right to be in the compartment without tickets, but the train moves off and it is impossible for the trio to disembark. Although Red is antagonistic towards Goat, Mary Jane charms the inspector. The next morning a telegram informs Goat the prisoner in Calcutta is actually A.K. Biswas, wanted in Mumbai for gambling offenses, not Bhattacharya. Banerjee discovers Red has used J.R. Kipling's novel, Kim, as the source for much of his journey across India. Goat persuades Red to take Mr. Banerjee's photograph. Banerjee convinces Red to wait until the next day. The next morning Banerjee oversleeps, then claims his unshaven face is unsuitable for photography. All the film proves to be missing from the camera and the luggage. Banerjee blames thieves at the last station. Red suspects Banerjee but can prove nothing. At the next stop a Mr. Ramaswamy joins them. He explains his job consists of visiting each station on the railway to see that railway stationery and forms are only used for official purposes. Banerjee suggests that Ramaswamy falsifies his returns to save traveling so much. Shortly thereafter Banerjee questions the ethics of Goat condemning a person to jail. Goat insists that would be the job of the magistrates and judges. Banerjee seeks to enlist the Guru as a moral ally in his cause. The Guru is unhelpful, saying that a man lives his life regardless of his surroundings and brings to everyone's attention Mr. Banerjee's use of hair dye. Banerjee claims he dyes his hair from simple vanity, though he jokingly calls it a disguise. Mr. Ramaswamy notices the initials on Banerjee's suitcase and accuses Banerjee of being A.K. Bhattacharya but relents, as it seems too far-fetched. At the last stop before Calcutta, Banerjee persuades Goat to get a shave from one of the local barbers. The barber Banerjee selects speaks no language Goat knows. The barber is deliberately very slow. 
The train pulls out and Goat has to run and jump to get on board. Goat accuses Banerjee of engineering the incident so that Goat would be left behind. In a dialect that the backpackers do not speak Banerjee blames Red and Mary Jane, claiming that they feared Goat would denounce them for not having visas. The train approaches Calcutta and Banerjee notes that he feels as if A.K. Bhattacharya were on the train with them. He praises Bhattacharya at length and suggests that he is akin to the hippies, Red and Mary Jane, in that he breaks down the barriers of society that have become too rigid. In subduing Banerjee inadvertently incites those present to break the law, which gives Goat the opportunity to arrest him. As the train draws up to the platform, Banerjee, refers to Bhattacharya's scheme being exposed with a cigar lighter, which is not public knowledge. Goat exposes and arrests Bhattacharya. Goat travels in a private carriage on the return journey. He has been ordered to get a confession from Bhattacharya, since the authorities wish to avoid the expense of a full trial. Goat must also escort Mr. Biswas, the card sharp, back to Mumbai for trial. At the last minute, Red and Mary Jane board the carriage, claiming to be concerned for Bhattacharya's well-being. Bhattacharya states his intention to escape during the journey and claims he has accomplices who will help him. Goat suspects the backpackers of being Bhattacharya's accomplices. As night falls, Goat works on getting Bhattacharya to confess. Mary Jane argues that Bhattacharya is a force for good in society, as he boasted on the outward journey. Mary Jane believes this should be his courtroom defense. Goat sees Mr. Ramaswamy at a station and invites him to join the party in the private carriage. Bhattacharya tries to frighten Mr. Ramaswamy by claiming to be friends with thuggy cultists, homerder travelers. Goat rebuffs this and indicates that Bhattacharya can expect a thirty-year prison sentence. The length of the sentence horrifies Goat's traveling companions and Goat goes to sleep resolving to use a sympathetic approach to draw Bhattacharya into a confession. The next day Goat suggests the charges could be reduced if Bhattacharya pleads guilty. Bhattacharya in turn offers Goat a partnership in exchange for the charges being reduced to a single, minor item. Goat rejects this. At lunch Red abruptly insists on taking Goat's photograph. The train enters a dark tunnel and no one can see anything. Goat finds the meal bitter and unpleasant but has a second helping to please the cook and notices the second helping tastes different. Goat realizes that he has been drugged. He forces himself to get up and vomit in the toilet, then collapses. Waking, he overhears Mary Jane arguing with Bhattacharya. He asks for tea, which Mary Jane helps him to drink. By the time the train reaches the next station Goat is well again. He decides to take no action against Red, who he is sure is responsible for the poisoning, out of respect for Mary Jane. Dot. At the next station an old lady, Mrs. Chiplanka, insists in joining their carriage. She claims to be a respectable pillar of the community who once worked with Mahatma Gandhi to achieve independence from the British. Goat notes her spectacles are fitted with ordinary window glass. He searches her luggage but finds nothing. Although Goat suspects her of being Bhattacharya's accomplice, he can do nothing without evidence. That afternoon Goat makes little progress in obtaining a confession, so he decides to wear down Bhattacharya by depriving him of sleep. Mrs. Chiplanka objects to this as it is a form of torture. Angered, Goat accuses her of being Bhattacharya's accomplice. Mrs. Chiplanka, embarrassed, admits that she wears the glasses for show. Many years ago Gandhi told her to wear spectacles when he saw her leaning close to her work. Rather than correct the great man's mistake or worry him, Mrs. Chiplanka began wearing false glasses much like his own. After this, Goat realizes there never were any accomplices and Bhattacharya says he will plead guilty. He makes a full statement, which Goat takes down. Red seems disillusioned by Bhattacharya's confession. Mary Jane comforts Red, who agrees to go with her to the United States of America.
Bhattacharya signs the statement, which is witnessed by Ramaswamy. Tired from the long night, Goat accepts Ramaswamy's offer to guard Bhattacharya while Goat sleeps. An hour later Goat is woken. Bhattacharya has escaped. Goat gives chase. The train is in motion and Goat searches the other carriages then climbs onto the roof. He finds Bhattacharya in the driver's compartment and takes him into custody. Moments later the train arrives in Mumbai and the novel ends. Inspector Ganesh Goat a hard-working and honest police inspector with the Mumbai police. A.K. Bhattacharya. An intelligent and sophisticated Bengali fraudster who passes off wax copies of stone statues as genuine antiquities. On the outward journey to Calcutta, Bhattacharya uses the name, Banerjee. Redmond, Red, Travers. An arrogant and sometimes aggressive young British backpacker, traveling with Mary Jane. He is opposed to any form of bureaucracy including visas which he has destroyed, and railway tickets. Although he seems to be antagonist towards Inspector Goat also Inspector suspects him to be accomplice of A.K. Banarji. But in the end we don't find Red to be any fraudster. Mary Jane, Little Cloud. A charming and sincere American girl traveling with Red. Mr. Ramaswamy. A hard-working railway inspector who visits each railway station to check that stationery and forms are only being used for official purposes. A.K. Biswas. A Bengali gambler who is wanted for gambling offenses in Mumbai. Mrs. Chiplanka. An elderly woman who was a political activist working for Mahatma Gandhi when the British ruled India.